Welcome back to the No Bullshit Guide to Java Spring Boot, Part 18. Today we cover miscellaneous topics. You should know that these exist, but you can look these up if you need to. I have videos on all of them, so if you are interested in one, click the link in the upper right hand corner or check the description. First up, we have UUIDs or GUIDs. This stands for Universally Unique Identifier or Globally Unique Identifier. These are alternatives to auto incrementing integers. So in our product table, we had 1, 2, 3 as our primary key. But you can have a GUID, which is a pseudo random string of characters. This is useful because these IDs are unique across all entities. And if a user deletes one, you don't have a gap in your sequence. Next up is events. An example would be after successfully deleting a product, you would send an email to the user. Events are a common design pattern across many programming frameworks, and Spring Boot has its own implementation. Next up, there are many things you can return. HTML, XML, we did cover JSON, but also document types like PDF or XLS spreadsheet. For the document types, you can use a library to build it out, which actually makes it really easy to incorporate your data model into a spreadsheet. Next up, you can save JSON to MySQL. There is a JSON data type in your table. This is good for record keeping, like if you have a response coming in like the CatFax API and you want to log it, you can do that with JSON. And there are also other niche use cases, for example, complex configuration that my work uses that you can change during runtime without a redeployment. Everyone's favorite, auto-generating tables and columns, so you don't have to manually enter your SQL queries to generate your tables or add columns. Just enter this line in your properties file and Hibernate will do it for you. That being said, it is good that you did it manually so that you can understand how it works. My work uses something called Liquibase, which helps manage database changes over many environments. And lastly, you do have to think about versioning. So APIs change during development and over time. So how do you update them without breaking stuff? Well, you could just create a new endpoint. Instead of slash product, you have slash product slash version two, or you could have the same endpoint, but then you would need to update your database. So you'd probably add a new column that says version one, but when you update it, you change it to version two and add the new data. Okay, if you're interested in any of these topics, please click the links. Otherwise, please like and subscribe.